Um, but Paroka, I want to, you know, we talked a little bit about what the state is, um, but Laura was starting get in, getting into the second half of the book, which is revolution. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about uh, what that looks like and what happens after. Lenin uses this term a lot called dictatorship of the proletariat. Um, and it sounds a little outdated. Um, so maybe we can talk about what that actually means and what uh, is needed for a successful revolution. Okay, I mean, State and Revolution, the book, was written in, in August and September 1917, so it was written during the revolution. Lenin had a bundle of notes which he took with him to Finland and uh, worked on this book to develop a program for the revolution. And he based himself on the Paris Commune. He said that, for example, there should be no privileges. There should be everyone who is responsible for anything should be elected and there should be a possibility to reselect or, or take out that person from their positions. There should be a rotation of posts and there should also be democratic control of arms. And the, the state forces, Lenin concluded, they are the main organs of counter-revolution. If you look at Myanmar now or, or Colombia, it's the army that is used against those who are protesting. They are shooting people. They are uh, uh, violently attacking and they are arresting masses under protests. And that was also, of course, the, the case in, in Egypt previously and in Sudan a couple, two years ago during the revolutionary events in Sudan. The old state has to be purged. And that goes to begin with, with the generals, with the officers, with the police commissioners, the bosses of all repressive forces. And the soldiers or, or the rank and file in the repressive apparatus can maybe be won over or they can be neutralized by masses who have control of their own arms or democratic control of that. Social democracy or social democrats, and, and I understand in the US now there is a bit trendy to be a supporter of Karl Kautsky, Kautskyists as well, they never understood the Marxist theory of the state. If you look at, at Sweden, it was an example of reforms. Social democracy, of course, never attacked the capitalist, but it also never changed the state. They left the generals the managers of state uh, authorities, agencies, institutions, departments, untouched. They were kept and they could then hit back against the welfare reforms when the kind of social counter-revolution started. Or of course, they, they didn't touch the monarchy either, who is also part of the state. And the dictatorship of, of capitalists, or as we say, now, or we've said for a while, the dictatorship of, of the market has to be replaced by democratic workers' rule. And that's what Lenin meant with the dictatorship of the proletariat. The proletariat in Russia, of course, was a minority of the population. In most countries, the working class, the proletariat is another word for the working class. They are the majority of the population, or when they are in a minority, they are supported by the poor masses or, uh, and, uh, and the oppressed. Uh, and this is a transitional regime. When the working class put up their own state, that is not a state to develop to a new oppressive apparatus. It's a state that is, that is supposed to uh, be uh, less and less important, have a less and less weight within society, with more and more people involved and in, in getting the fruits of what is produced in society. It will gradually disappear. Today, the state can include some public sector welfare and people will say, well, well, we're against privatization. Doesn't that mean that we're in favor of the state? And, and of course, some part of public sector welfare are concessions to the working class. They're not needed for production. The capitalist can produce without having a system of pensions, which they, of course, have in countries where they have been able to do that. They can, they can be without elderly care. They, they can also be without unemployment benefits. They don't need that. But this, this now, of course, also is paid by the taxes, uh, this working class paying taxes and then pay for that. But still, there are other parts of the public sector welfare today. For example, uh, so some social security, uh, childcare that is needed for production. They need 
uh, the whole working class and for that they have to in some countries to uh, uh, organize childcare. The, uh, those organs also have some repressive uh, part. The miners in the miners strike in Britain in 1984-85 said they were as afraid of social authorities as of the police because that could uh, the social authorities could, could take decisions about their children about where about their housing benefits and such things so and some in any capitalist state they want those people to have some privileges if you're a, if you're a boss in the state you should behave and you should be paid almost if, as if you're a boss in a company and and minor bosses as well should have should have a little bit privileges so us defending against privatization doesn't mean that we defend parts of the state that will uh, continue to exist after the working class has taken power. It means that they will be democratized. They will be controlled and ruled by the people working there and the people using those uh, utilities.